Hey everyone, it's Classic DM with another video for you today, and today we're going to talk about Mongoose Traveler. Now, what's the purpose of the video? The purpose is to evangelize Mongoose Traveler. If for anyone that's ever played D&D, Pathfinder, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, and maybe even played Classic Traveler way back in the day when it first came out, I want to kind of give you an insight into what's happened with the game, the game series, how to get a copy of it, what to do, what not to do and why you probably just need to start off with one core book. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the details. Let's say you just went to the internet and said, hey, listen, Mongoose Traveler, you type it in Google, you go to their webpage. Mongoose is a publisher. They're set up out of the UK. They've had the license to do the Traveler uh, series of Mark Miller for a long time now, probably way back to even 2012 or so, if I'm not mistaken. They have a lot of licenses, but the Traveler license is probably the best that they have, and they probably have done it the, the most modernization and justice to it that anyone could possibly hope for. Uh, it's perhaps one of the more saving graces game systems that's out there right now. Uh, fifth edition's kind of going to the wayside, in my personal opinion. Pathfinder second edition's a little woke and getting kind of wonkier and wonkier every year, even though the core system is really, really strong. The books and the presentation and the world and the mythology and the characters and the emphasis and the theme in Pathfinder second edition is kind of cosplay silly. And some of you guys in my channel are old school. We come from a different world. We're not looking for cosplay silly. We're looking for adventure. We're looking for tactical combat. We're looking for something that sparks our imagination that our players can have fun with. We still play D&D face-to-face. Some of you still play, you know, games remotely because you have to but let's go into like how to get a copy and which one i'm talking about here so the reason why i think this is really important to talk about is that it's confusing and it's expensive if you don't know what you're doing so if you go to the mongoose publishing site and scroll down you'll see they have traveler which is this section here traveler 2300 ad which is a spin-off that game designers workshop did in the early 80s with a traveler system kind of set in a not so far future and then they have sea of thieves and paranoia we don't want any of these well he wants the traveler page when you go to the actual traveler section itself, you know, they're presenting the game system as if you've never ever played it or never heard of it before. So I'm going to spend like three minutes <laughs> telling you, I'm assuming that you don't know or you have forgotten. Traveler is really like Star Trek, the original series. It is a universe that mankind has discovered how to travel great distances. In the Traveler universe, they call it the jump drive. The jump drive kind of like going into hyperspace in the Star Wars movies. It's not like the warp drive you have in Star Trek. In Star Trek, they're just zipping around really, really quickly and speedily in the original series. Later on, they kind of enter this weird hyperspace and they're sometimes fighting it and all this kind of business. In Traveler, you kind of go into this jump space and it takes one week to go X number of parsecs, which is a unit of measurement in the universe, right? I can't remember the exact number. It's like 2.3 light years or something. Someone can put a comment and tell me exactly what a parsec is. So the different ratings of your jump drive did help determine how far you can jump because we all know that because of Einstein's theory of relativity and everything else, if you travel at the speed of light, you know, what you thought was a seven-year-old kid when you left and you come back, the person's passed away or now they're 80 years old. You see that in the Aliens movie when Ripley is rescued in space. I mean, her mother and her daughter, everyone has passed away, et cetera. So the jump drive means that it takes a week to go from point A to point B and you have a limited distance you can go. So you're not folding space like an event horizon and popping out in another galaxy like Andromeda. You're going to go from, you know, our universe to Alpha Centauri, which is four light years away. It might be a jump that takes you, you know, one week. No matter the distance you can go is controlled by the jump drive. Okay, so with that established, it's very much like a horse in the Roman Empire. News can only travel as fast as a horse in the Roman Empire and in the Wild West in America before they invented the, the telegraph. So due to that, all these different worlds never encountered each other until much, much later in their development. So due to that, you have all these massive empires and other intelligent species of star-faring races and other parts of the world that aren't advanced technology, that are low technology level societies all over the universe for you to go to explore, just like I said a few minutes ago, kind of like in Star Trek, the original series. Now, in Star Trek, you got the Klingons and the Romulans and the Federation, right? Well, in the Traveler universe, it has its own really, 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 really long history. And there's a number of factions kind of based on races and the Imperium, etc. You don't have to use their universe, but their universe is incredibly robust, incredibly detailed, and has tons and tons and tons of resources. 
So, wow, sounds like a cool series, right? You're, you're, you and your five friends are in a far trader and you're planning out where you're going to travel. You're going to transport goods and buy them in this planet on this star base and you're going to go to this other one or you're going to go on a mercenary mission and take out someone and assassinate someone or you're going to explore some uncharted ice moon and find out what this weird signal that's happening from there. Think of any plot line you've seen in Star Trek, the original series, and you can do that too. And it may be some in the next generation and some in DS9, but not as much because those things change dramatically. A lot of new crazy races were introduced. But it's not really like Star Wars where you're, Luke is in the X-Wing fighter and he just jumps to hyperspace and, you know, or the Millennium Falcon and they get there pretty quickly. It's just a, a Lucasfilm swipe and then boom, you're back in you know, Coruscant, right? Where do you start? You start here with the Crowder Core rulebook. But as you can see, if you look around, these are all hardbacks. Hardbacks are expensive. But all these are books here that expanded the original universe that was developed by Games Designers Workshop with Mark Miller, Frank Chadwick, and other people in The First Traveler, in Mega Traveler, in Traveler the New Era, one of my favorites. I love Mega Traveler and the New Era. They're my two favorites. I like classic, but it's just so rudimentary. It needs more, right? The fourth edition is not so much. The fifth edition is a, a builder. It's sort of like, you know, everything is a maker, a builder table. So... If you want to get into Traveler and you want to drop a lot of money, sure, you can buy all kinds of books like The Sword Worlds, The Great Rift, The Glorious Empire, Solomania Adventures, the Central you know, Supply Catalog with all kinds of gears and weapons and vehicles and, and all kinds of neat stuff, High Guard. So all the, and The Secret of the Ancients, which I have, it's amazing. So if you're getting into it, it's like discovering Led Zeppelin for the first time. You're like, wow, I got this Led Zeppelin 4 album. It's really cool. Well, they have like seven or eight albums. You could check them out too. So you have this massive library of cool content created, but where do you start? All you really need is this book right here. It's called, it's very confusing, The Traveler Core Rulebook Update 2022. So it's 2024 now. So you think to yourself, oh gosh, where's the 2024 version? It's kind of a branding uh, confusement thing if you ask me. In essence, this is just the latest version of the Core Rulebook. They do updates to it periodically in PDF form and perhaps even in print. This is the Core Book. It is like the Player's Handbook the Dungeon Master's Guide, the Monster Manual, a Supply Catalog, a Magic and a magic Swords and, and Book and Weapons book, all rolled into one. But it's not full of all these feats and bloat and junk you see like in the Traveler, um, excuse me, in Pathfinder Core Rulebook or the new one now that I forgot what they ever call it now, Player Core. So this is a great book to get. But you see right away it's in America, I've got my currency set to US dollars, change yours to wherever you live. It's 60 buck book. You're like, wow, 60 bucks. Let me get a PDF. So then you go down here, 30 bucks for a PDF. It's like, whoo, this is one thing that Paizo does really, really well. You can get all their books for like $19.99 in PDF form. They know that they're fan base, they're a book publisher. Their books are beautiful, well put together, pretty darn well edited, lots of good, interesting art. Some of the art's great, some of the art's kind of amateurish, but their books are clean. Like when they put their, they're a book publisher. So when Paizo does a book, a lot of people are subscribed and they're getting the hard copy and a free PDF as well. So this is something that you don't really see with Mongoose. Like you're buying the hard copy or you're buying the PDF. You don't get both. Here's an inside trick you can do, right? You can buy the hard copy and email Mongoose and say, hey, listen, here's a copy of my receipt. Can I get a PDF copy as well? They did that for me last year, but I'm not sponsored or anything. Now, it's just a small little boutique YouTube channel. I'm not some big influencer that screams into the microphone. I talk fast, but I'm not screaming into the freaking microphone. All right. I'm not going to whore myself for someone else. But they gave me PDF copies of all the books I'd actually proved that I purchased. And I bought mine on Amazon. Right. So you could do that as well. Now, say you're a good drive through RPG kind of person. You love getting all your RPG books. You're not a pirate. You're a respectful man <laughs> or young man or, or young lady or whatever you are. And you go to drive through RPG and you want to get a copy of it. You say, Hey, I bet I can get it for less at drive through RPG. Well, that drive through RPG has redone their website in the last year or so. It's cleaner. Now it's easier to, to navigate, but the buttons and stuff like that are in different places. You can go to the publisher section, which is this button right here, right? Up in the upper left hand corner if you click on publishers it's going to lift all the list all the major publishers like free league and mordifius and need games and black oath entertainment and white wolf etc right here in the middle is mongoose so if you click on mongoose it's going to come to their core publisher page for all their pdfs and you can see wow look at all this other stuff they do right they go mongoose and french they have the traveler aid society victory at sea they have all kinds of stuff this one right here not traveler fiction and not this one. This is the first edition they did. 
the first edition was basically almost literally taking the core books and just republishing them into uh how do i say this they weren't like the staple bound little black books they're thicker more perfect bound with a glued end on they have a lot more content on it. but this was great because the the period of time when i think his name is gareth hanneran did the system and did the conversions there was some modernizations in there and they did almost all the original books in the same kind of little black book looking format but they were thicker and, but they didn't have any art in them hardly at all and they did a book a hard book book version of travel it was okay had a lot of black and white this is the one you want right so when you click on this one you'll find all the books that i was showing you here on their website so let's go back a little bit so you can see all the different books right they're all pretty expensive but they're very very well done very well written and all the books are in here. So now you're gonna look around and try to find it, right? So where's the core rule book? Where is it? So let's see if we can find it. Let's look around, look around, look around. Where is it gonna be? Hottest titles, let's go through this. Maybe it's been purchased a lot by people. I don't see it there, I don't see it there. So you can see I'm having to spend time navigating this. So if you're trying to discover this, this is the newest titles from Mongoose. It's almost like Netflix trying to find a movie. Most popular under $15, most popular under 10, that's not gonna work. So we need to find, oh, there it is. I own this, right? So this is the core rule book. You own this title, 30 bucks for the PDF. So you're not saving any money. Whereas if you buy the PDF first, you're screwing yourself. You're gonna have to spend another 60 bucks to get the hardback. So my tip to you really is to go, you know, send Mongoose an email, say, hey, I'm about to pull the trigger on buying a Traveler Core Rulebook update 2022. Um, if, if I buy it from you or I buy it from Amazon or Miniature Market, um, and I show you the proof of purchase, can I get a copy of the PDF as well? They're probably gonna, they might say no. Eventually it doesn't really benefit them. If I was them, I would start giving away the PDF with a hard copy, but there's no way for them to, to do that for you online. They don't have like a repository the same way that like Paizo does. Okay, now let's take a look at the actual books themselves. Let me turn this music down. Um, why do I wanna look at the book and the PDF? Okay, I wanna evangelize some things about the game system that's a little different, but not unheard of, strange, and weird if you've played Traveler in the past a long time ago, but you've forgotten about it, right? If you're playing Traveler now, you know all the stuff. You can skip my video and go straight to Seth's channel, right? And watch voice actors. Um, and this one here, the system is broken down very clean into character creation and then how to handle skills and tasks and then how to handle combat. And then it kind of shifts into like a game master referee mode, like how to set up encounters, what kind of equipment can the players have, talk about the vehicles, the spacecraft, and then space combat, which is complicated, spacecraft construction, because one of the big things about travel, a lot of people like to build their own ships and balance it all out, which is almost like an EVE Online combat activity. And then they talk about psionics, and they have a listing of all the common spacecraft with all their, all their deck plans, everything. And they talk about trade and the world and the universe. So let's just quickly look at what's different here. In the book is the book is written as if you didn't know anything about traveler which is really good because it's nice to see it restated if you're an old school player like me and you remember it and you have the old vibes right the you can recapture that and you go oh, gee where do i start uh, i remember playing you know death station or, or something like that or a long time ago or secret of the agents or i can't remember the name of some of the, the adventures we played the legend of the sky raiders by fossa right so they start off with campaign ideas. So they talk about what a trading campaign is, what a military campaign is, you know, an explorer campaign, and they cite Star Trek, and they cite movies like Aliens and Starship Troopers, or the Traveler campaign, a mixture of all that. Once they've kind of introduced you to that, and they talk about some of the main ideas and some of the books you might want to consider, they talk about the game conventions. Now, if you've never played Traveler before, it is 2D6. Almost everything is a target number of eight or higher. Just take that basic concept, you want to succeed at hitting someone with a sword or a lightsaber or a fusion pistol, or you're going to punch someone and grab someone, throw them on the ground, pick a lock, hack into a computer, repair an engine and a ship. Anything you do as a character is pretty much an eight or higher, unless it's adjusted by some strange skill level, right? But your skills, you know, like Scotty was an engineer in Star Trek, whereas Mr. Spock is a Vulcan science officer and McCoy was a medical guy. So if you have Dr. McCoy down in engineering, he's not going to try to help fix the engine, but Scotty can do it because he's skill five in engineering and warp drives and et cetera. So people have roles based upon skills. This happens in the military and the real world, right? So this game is a skill-based system. So unlike D&D and Pathfinder and a lot of other games, you don't have this growth in hit points. You don't have levels determining what you're 
uh, target number is you're going to hit or your bonuses, your base attack bonus. Everything in Traveler is based around a target number, how difficult it is to do it, and the things about your character that will give you an opportunity to execute that move better than someone who doesn't have skill in it. All right. So it's a very, very simple system. It, it's not full of a lot of uh, bloat with feats and class feats. And that's one of the things about Pathfinder draws me freaking batty, right? It's too many feats. Now, I remember we mentioned the technology levels. They describe that very clearly here. You could do an adventure where your friends are starfaring on a you know free trader or a transport, and you're going to this planet to a star base, and the other continent's off limits because it's full of primitives at technology level three, right? Who are just now in the start to get to their own industrial revolution, maybe using steam power. I mean, I mean that's an adventure you could do, like the 1800s, like a wild west. But then you got the opportunity to create a different culture and a different landscape, maybe be influenced by world history, or maybe you're going to like one of the Star Trek episodes where you're going to this planet and the people on the planet are only early stellar, like astronauts to the moon, seeing a starship flying through the sky and seeing a free trader land would freak everyone out. Is there a prime directive in this universe? No, there's not. <laughs> so the adventures you can have a lot of times anchor on what the technology levels of the places that you go. And since the whole universe is so massive and all the planets are completely mapped out, there's all kinds of different technology levels of all the places. Unlike in the real world, yeah, we hear every now and then about a small little island in the Pacific with natives on it, but most of the world's wearing LA Lakers t-shirts and using mobile phones, okay? And have the access to the internet. So this is a really interesting concept that you don't have in any other game because all other role-playing game is based on a fictional fantasy planet whereas this is an entire universe now yes there is a star trek role-playing game there is a star wars role-playing game but but this system just gives you so much more freedom to do what you want to do now what's really different from the original in the original when you rolled up a character you entered into a military service like the Marines or the Navy or the Army, and you try to roll some skills to see if you get successfully promoted. And if you get promoted, you served a term of four years, and you might pick a couple of little skills like Gun Combat 1 and Gun Combat 2. And you might make it was very rudimentary in 1977. This has been flushed out in much more detail now without breaking the spirit of the original idea. So there's a lot more options of what you can become. Now, like all role playing games, there's these core statistics or traits or ability scores, and in Traveler, they're broken out into two major categories, physical characteristics and mental characteristics, which you see in this blue box in the upper right-hand corner. So strength, dexterity, endurance is physical, and mental, you know, intellect, education, and social standing. Social standing is not used in anyone else's role-playing game. In a universe where news travels only as fast as a pony, <laughs> as an analogy, you know, where you have empires like Constantinople don't keep in touch what's going on in Rome in ancient history, you have these situations where nobility and the family line and the, the rulership and the governing bodies that control a world or control a region of the world rely heavily on being independently ruled, almost like city-states. So you don't have this like, oh, it's the Federation. We all get along. We use self-state communication. Lieutenant Uhura sends a message back and we hear back in 17 minutes. You don't get that because they have an, they have an X boat system with these super fast Pony Express traveling starships with jump drives that actually physically carry either digital chip images or written messages to convey information from one part of the world to the next. So imagine that you have a friend who lives in England and you can only communicate with your friend in England or maybe a friend in America if you're an English person. And it takes 52 weeks to get a message to each other. So it kind of feels like the 1700s all over again, right? You have to sail across the Atlantic to get the word out. So imagine all the things that happened during this period in world history of colonization and imperialism and everything else that happened. You have empires in India set up by the United Kingdom or the British Empire. And people came from all over Europe to the United States to progress westward and the indigenous Indians got pushed out. So the reason why I mention these historical things in the real world is that connects to how long it takes for news to travel. So therefore things like social standing have an impact on where you stand in this universe. So let's move on from there. All the ability scores is a 2d6 roll, a couple minor modifiers, but most characters have statistics between two and 12 and that's it. You don't have a, a, a 3d6 up to 18. You don't have a d100 like in my game. You have things that are much smaller compact numbers because the game is all about rolling 2d6. It comes from a time frame or an epoch when Board games from Avalon Hill and war games just used six-sided dice like you have at a craps table in Vegas. There was no polyhedral dice. That didn't come around until Dungeons and Dragons came out with their basic edition. All right, we're gonna speed things up here a little bit. Careers. 
So unlike in the original Traveler, when you're joining a, creating a character, you choose a career path you want to do. Let's say you personally, as a young kid, wanted to be a lawyer or a medical professional, but maybe today you're actually working in marketing and you're doing digital art, or you're a used car salesman now. You never thought you'd do that. You went to business school, but the economics is too hard. Now you're selling used cars, you're doing great. I mean, you might have a lot that you own. You might be working for an insurance company. When you started out at 18, you probably didn't imagine that you would be where you are when you're like my age, like close to 60, right? I didn't think I'd be a video game designer. I was going into architecture. I did that for 10 years before I transitioned. Who knows where you're gonna be? I never thought I'd be making a video about Traveler 40 years after the damn game comes out. Anyway, you pick a core career and there's a, and there's a whole process of how you pick the career, you try to enter into that career path every term, which is four years, you're either be promoted or something has happened to you and you're picking up skills along the way. Some skills you get to choose. So, oh, of these six or seven skills, pick one. Or some of them you're given automatically and some of them you're trying to obtain, you don't get to uh, get, you don't succeed by not making a role. So when you're rolling the character up, the whole path, like you see here, you know, it's very interesting because you don't know exactly what you're going to get. Unlike you do have decision-making power, you do make decisions like you do in real life. So it's probably one of the most realistic character creation systems I've ever seen. If you want a character to be a normal human being and have a really diverse life experiences before you go adventuring, you might go adventuring at age 40 in this game. This isn't like eight year old level one dwarf going into the village of Hamlet and trying to find out where the Druid's Grove is and if you can buy a beer, right? It's not like that at all. You're, in a, you're a, an adult, you have means, methods, skills, contacts, enemies, all kinds of things. And you're living in a vibrant world that isn't necessarily trying to kill you all the time. So you roll your characteristics first, then you choose like some background, whether you went to college or other university, you may have some pre-career optional elements. Then you choose a term for one of these career paths. And then you, once you do it, once you get into the term, you have to roll every term of four years to see how you advance and pick a few skills. And then you decide whether to muster out, you might have a mishap, in the original Traveler, you'd have a survival role, you would die. And everyone used to laugh about how you would die in character creation. In Mongoose Traveler, they've kind of given an option, say, hey, you had a mishap, you got injured, something happened, you got pushed out, etc. Then you pick skill packages, muster out, and boom, you're ready to go. You even have like money, maybe even a ship, all kinds of neat things can happen to you. The degree of the handouts that the mustering out can be very dependent upon your referee. I don't run around handing out ships to people, right? I usually have a plot and a storyline, a world and adventure for them to get into and start doing that and let's see how they handle it, right? So let's get to the careers themselves. So they are each career, I'm gonna read here on the right-hand column, these schematic, not schematic, thematic ideas have three subsets that are specific, all right? So you have thematic careers, like entertainer, which has a subset, could be a journalist, right? Or it could be an artist or a performer, like a guitar player, right? So you have agent, army, citizen of the Imperium or citizen of the world, drifter, which is like just drifting along, doing whatever you want to do, homeless, barbarian, wanderer, scavenger, entertainer, marine, merchant, navy, noble, rogue, scholar, and scout. So these are kind of like classes, but it's not like you're going to get a scout ability as a field researcher, excuse me, a scholar as a field researcher that you have a feat that you get to roll called discover and uh, no, you know, understand knowledge and translate hieroglyphs. Like you don't get those kind of specifics. You use your skills to do random checks provided by the referee along the way when you're trying to do something. So once you get into a career path and you qualify for it, you start going through the process of picking a number of terms. You have to pick the subset right away. Like for example, if you're gonna pick an agent, this law enforcement or intelligence or corporate. So this, th this theme, major theme, three subsets. The Army, Support, Infantry, Cavalry. Citizen of the Imperium, Corporate, a Worker, or a Colonist. Drifter, Barbarian, a Wanderer, or a Scavenger. And they're all defined in the book. Entertainer, Artist, Journalist, Performer, you heard me say that earlier. Marine, Support, a Star Marine, or a Ground Assault Marine. Merchant, a Merchant Marine, a Free Trader, or a Broker. Navy, Line Crew, Engineer, Flight. Noble, Administrator, Diplomat, a Dilettante. Rogue, thief, enforcer, or pirate, scholar, field researcher, scientist, or physician. You starting to see this feeling here? This is kind of like going to university. I want to get an engineering degree, but I want to be in chemical, not mechanical engineering. A scout, courier, surveyor, explorer. And then you have these life event tables you roll for. Once you've gone through this process of rolling up your whole character, that's pretty much all you need to know to play. 
last year they released a free version of this that had some of the careers but not all of them you could probably dig up one of my old youtube videos that talks about that the book itself beyond this point talks about some of the alien races like the aslan etc and the varger which are like a dog race i never was a big fan of the aslan and the varger and the centaurs and the and the hivers and the kree i always thought those were a little goofy um, but that's up to you. If you like that kind of stuff, then you can have these things in your in your universe that you want to play in. And there's also a prisoner, which is a career path that can happen inadvertently, and you end up being an inmate or a thug or a fixer, like Mr. Fox in Pulp Fiction. Um, so then it talks about the skill and task system, which is really fun and really good and really innovative and very simple. I will give you a word of warning. If you are someone that needs to read something two and three and four times to get it, don't feel bad if you do that reading this chapter. The way things are worded sometimes are like, it is so direct and to the point, there's no preamble at all, that you're like, wait, I just missed that one sentence. It said, you do what? This is how you handle you know, multiple attacks? I, I, I didn't realize you could do that with uh, automatic weapons. So it explains how tasks work in the game, which is what I mentioned before, where like everything is like an eight plus, but there's also a way for a referee to say, hey, listen, it isn't gonna be an eight plus. I'm not gonna give you a bonus. This is an average difficulty it, it is an a plus this one here is going to be easy you only got to roll a four or higher remember you're always rolling 2d6 so the task system does have a difficulty system my decimation game series has a difficulty system but it's not as not as many tiers as this you have boons and banes that will affect you how well you execute things and you have effects effect is a really strange word in this system you got to be careful and pay for it because pay attention to it because the effect is something that happens above and beyond based on whether you roll really, really far under or really, really over high. They do this in, in Traveler, like, uh, no, excuse me, the Paizo's Pathfinder. They have this, like, critical, and then they have this critical failure type of situations where things happen. They have task chains, etc. And they talk about all the skills very briefly, like admin, art, athletics, and you just flip through that, whatever skills. Then you get to combat, talks about how initiative is happening. Now, here's one element about Traveler that's very different. You don't have hit points, per se. You don't have hit points, right? You have strength <laughs> dexterity and endurance you have these three statistics or attributes and they're between two and 12. let's just say on average you have 777 which is 21 if you add them up when you get damaged and hurt with lethal damage the number that you say you take 12 points of damage and you had 777 you start reducing down each of the statistics down to zero and then the next one starts to get reduced down so if the first one gets reduced to zero this happens to you if the second one gets reduced to you down to zero this happens to you and if all three get reduced to zero you're dead and it's that kind of a system so it's that that is one element of the traveler system that has always been terrifying you have guns that are doing 2d 3d and 6d damage and people are running around with an average of between five and eight per statistic right around 20 to 24 of a health pool if you think about it so that's very 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 scary so you need to make sure that you play tactically if you keep moving make it harder to get hit use cover it is not a run and gun game you can run and gun if you're wearing power armor <laughs> you can do that stuff because armor makes a big difference in this game and it would in reality too so this chapter is really well done you have to it's very condensed very detailed some of the weapon traits are very confusing when you first read through them because they're so different like the auto trait for single burst and full auto they're they're just they just you have to read it a few times like okay okay and sometimes i've gone to forums and say, hey if i use this weapon and i shoot this way does it happen like a b or c and i've gotten different answers from people that are like been playing this game system for a long time because some situations like that don't really come up very often all right so this from this point forward now you're in a referee section of the book where it talks about encounters and dangers, everything you need to know to stimulate your imagination, set things up for your players to deal with. Let's go, then we go to the next chapter. We start with some alien creatures. They, they talk about how they have hits, which is like their hit points, how their speed is, the skills they might have, the damage they do. For example, this Karthus does 4D damage when it bites someone with this big, nasty, ugly frog mouth with shark teeth in it, right? It's a carnivore hunter. That's a nasty bastard. If you run into this guy, you better hope you got some kind of protective armor and automatic weapons and you and three of your friends are focus firing this thing attacking you because it's uh, scary. You'll die quickly. And it's kind of like horror. If you think about it, combat in Traveler is like horror. It's like a real shootout in the real world. It's horrific. No one wants, it's not, it's not this heroic version of 
of fantasy combat where like I've been hit and cast a heal on me. It's, that shit doesn't happen. This isn't anarchy online, okay? So this whole chapter has a lot of these monsters in it. It's not really a monster manual, but it gives you a system for how you can create your own and what kind of quirks you might have for NPCs. So a lot of Traveler is giving you the tools to make things up yourself to suit your world first and foremost, not to say, this is the monster manual. Like they don't do that. Like they, they, they will create adventures and worlds and talk about things that are going to explore and those are situations, but they don't run and they tell you, you can buy equipment and guns. They tell you what these equipment and guns doing when it comes to creating creatures and NPCs, it's a, it's up to you, right? So you have complete power to do this kind of stuff. Then they have a whole section, like I mentioned on equipment, which goes through all the guns and the different type of armor. The illustrations are wonderful. I really like the illustrations they've done in this section of the book. This is probably the best section of the whole book is having some good pictures that match up with some of the technology, right? Because it gives you a sense of like what a portable computer kind of looks like in the Traveler universe. You know, we, in your mind, you think of something, oh, I've seen so many movies that have like laptops and, and, and virtual reality screens and things in Minority Port, ones in Star Trek and all the different, what does it look like in this world? But you can change this, of course, but it has systems that describe everything and, and give you the power to take the influence and create your own thing by the technology level, right? So portable computers, you can see here on page like 112, whether it's technology level 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, what it can do, what's its cost, what's processing power, etc. So you have all the different supplies. That section's wonderful. That's great. All the melee weapons, all the energy weapons, the illustrations are wonderful. Really, really good. Very inspiring. Great drop shadows. Good color layout. Nice and good font. They have a big section on vehicles. It talks about all the different statistics. If you're going to create a vehicle, if they're not pink cars, like this terrible picture in the lower right-hand corner, but it shows you how all the different statistics, what they mean for range and cruise speed and agility, et cetera. So, you know, you can create combat situations where you're in a tank and you're fighting some other guy on a hovercraft or two land speeders are fighting each other with mounted weapons on them. They're a closed vehicle or an open air vehicle. Critical hit effects. So you can do that kind of combat. There's a system for that. Really, really interesting. You have spacecraft, how to operate a spacecraft. It has its own character sheet. Ships are a big deal in Traveler. There's a lot of different kinds of ships. It's like in EVE Online. They have all these different statistics and armor, M drives, maneuver drives, jump drives, hull, all kinds of details, fuel. So if you're really into the technical details, like we're going to travel here, we need to make this much money to pay this much mortgage on the on the ship, or we're under under attack, we don't have any sand casters. You know, what are you going to do? How are you going to handle this? It, because you, you spend money, your character can die. <laughs> so it's not like a fantastical wooden ship flying through the nether void meeting illithids. You know, it's not like that. It's much more anchored in reality. And it's that's part of the fun of the adventure because it's easier for you as a person to have an imagination and play the world on your human traits that you already have as a person. It's, it's not like you're having to pretend that you're a drow elf that's escaped from Menzo Branson. You're not a drow elf, you're a person. So in this game, it's so much easier to project and care about and understand all the technical feeling details in Traveler, especially with the ship section. Let's move on from this. Talks about travel times. Yeah, then they have a space combat section. I'm not going to get into that. So if you're ever going to have any space combat, this is a whole system in here for you to handle that as well. This is really more uh, referee oriented. You heard me mention before how a lot of people like to build ships and design their own ships. There's a massive, incredible set of PDFs done by an architect called Geomorphs for Traveler. I'll put a link in the description. They're freaking awesome. This guy has made these modular map pieces for deck plans for everything you could ever, ever need. It is amazing. It's so freaking cool. So if you want to have a map and print it up on a printer, it even tells you how to print it different sizes and scales. You can design your own ship if you want to. Like, oh, I really love this one gazelle type, type uh, I don't know, let's say um, maybe like a Mimnotar Cyclone from EVE Online, primarily a missile ship, right? Or you want one with electronic jamming systems on it, and you and your friends are going to do a military mission, and you're on this big Cyclone, you know, battle cruiser, and it's got a crew of seven, right? And you got to create this as a referee. Well, this gives you how to build and design the ships with all the systems that need to come into play to make it work, right? And then beyond that, then they have all the common ships that have been in the universe for forever. Like they've never, I mean, they've had these things for over 40 years now. So the Scout Courier, the Seeking Mind Ship, the Free Trader, remember the, the infamous cover of the original Traveler box set with the three little black books on it had Mayday, Mayday, you know, this is Beowulf, blah, 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 blah. They had a Mayday message, right? And this was this kind of a ship right here. Some of this art's a little out of proportion, personally. I'm not a big fan of it, but it's still pretty good. The deck plans are super useful. 
safari ship, system defense boat, yachts, close escort. So as you can see, ships, wow, look at all these deck plans. This almost looks like an early version of the Enterprise. I had a Star Trek paperback book from the 70s that was written by William Shatner and some other people. And they talked about uh, some of the original designs for the original Enterprise by Gene Roddenberry and, and crew. And it had sketches. It showed all the sketches of the original designs for the Enterprise long before they settled on the final design. It was really cool. As a little boy who had like the Star Trek technical manual, I loved all that kind of crap. And before Star Wars came out, I remember one of the designs looked just like this. This is not a lady shaver. <laughs> so then you have the mercenary cruiser and these designs these ships hasn't changed in 40 years. They're just now much more detailed and nicely put together. So let's move on from here. So then you have a section for psionics, really great rule system to handle that. We all know in different versions of science fiction universes, ranging from the next generation all the way down to the original, that psionics are always there, like the force in many ways in the Star Wars universe. Then you go from that all the way down into, that's, this scion is actually like a career path, which is, remember all the career paths we looked at earlier? You know, if you're a psionic person, this is your career path where you go into a wild talent or an adept or a psi warrior. So that's really cool as well. Talk about trade. A lot of people play Traveler with their characters are traveling from place to place and they're just trying to make a buck. All they do is make a money. It's like trade wars on bulletin board services in the, in the 90s. They, they were buying high and selling, uh, buying low and selling high. I always get things reversed. And then they have a section here that tells you, you know, you putting passengers, are you, are you handling mail? Do you have cargo, your engine sizes, local brokers making a living, selling illegal goods? I mean, there's a whole section here Look at this table of all the different types of live animals, cybernetics, crystals and gems, of, of things you could use to sell in the universe by rolling D66, right? <laughs> so, which I think is, what is that? 11, 11 six-sided dice. You'd throw, I mean, the lowest number could be an 11, the highest number could be 66. Now, for some reason, they refuse to use a percentile die. So say you roll a 43. A 43 is polymers, industrial. You know, it has to cost the base price is 7,000 credits. What's uh, the purchase dice modifier might be, you know, industrial skill set, et cetera. So you're talking about a really robust, well put together game here. This is one book, dude. And so the world, the universe creation is the same thing. Creating worlds, the statistics, the, the universal planetary profile, the UPP, they call it. Just like the universal personal profile they have for your character sheet. Like your character might, is just a string of, six digits with hexadecimal meaning any number over nine is a 10 is a you know b is 11 c is 12. so you had a character that had a stat of social standing of c that means it's 12. no 10 11 12 yes it means 12. so the same thing for rolling up worlds and designing worlds you have tables where you can define all the characteristics that you need to define that tell you what is on this planet from its government its population its gravity everything the law level the technology level Really robust, really useful. If you like creating universes in science fiction, this traveler is the best one for you. So this is very similar to the GM core in Paizo's uh, reboot and remaster of their second edition. The GM core in the Paizo book is really a, a dungeon master adventure creator run an adventure resource guide. It's not a how to handle combat and a list of magic items, right? like in the original Dungeon Masters in D&D. So this chapter gives you everything you need. It shows you how the hexadecimal, I mean, the hex uh, the hex grid maps, what the, that the symbols mean for the different planets and the symbols like C1 and C8 and the red zones and amber zones. These are all classic terms and ideas from the original Traveler. So when you're looking at maps, there's an online map of the entire Spinward Marches in the known universe in Traveler. And you'll see all these little dots. They have a little UPP, seven, seven or eight, nine digits that describe the planet. And then it shows a little color, and a little dot next to it. Almost like the original board game, Dark Nebula, right? Have you ever heard of that one? From that, you can see you're going to travel to here. You're going to travel to there. So there's this technical translation hook to Traveler with a little bit of scientific coding. It's almost like... If you look up the names of all the stars and the planets used the scientific numbers and the codes, they have nothing to do with like, it's Planibius, right? It's not that, it's something that's AGC, MGC, 644, right? So they have a system in place for how to map out the universe and what these travel codes mean. And of course, there's a great index. This has been a long, long video. I mean, I know it's been a long video. It's a big book. We're over 38 minutes now. If you want to get into a new game and you have a cool idea as a referee, and you want to kind of get into maybe getting your friends to come play it. I want to summarize some real quickly what makes the game interesting, right? You only need two six-sided dice primarily. You don't really have to have a massive imagination if you've seen any kind of Star Trek or Star Wars movie. Any plot works, 
right? Any plot works, whether it's from the Severance series, then with Ben Stiller from 2022 to Gladiator to Braveheart to Event Horizon to Alien, anything you want to do, any planet, any world, any time frame. But the fun factor is usually your characters are from a modern starfaring race or civilization, and you're traveling from place to place on for different reasons. And so when people create a character in this game world, it's very refreshing to play the game where it's like, you really kind of care about what's going on because it isn't about vanquishing 300 enemies. It's about having an adventure. And for the referee, you have, it's much more of an opportunity for you to plot things out. You don't need to make a linear world, but you have all the tools at your disposal to create situations at hand. You might have three or four major plot points. And listen, I want my players to go to this planet. It's primarily a desert world. It's used as a junkyard. Like the United States Air Force has a bunch of aircraft out in Tucson, Arizona, I think near Phoenix, or maybe near Tucson, where they're all just sitting out there in moratorium like thousands of C-130s. It's a junkyard for the Air Force. If you need to seal a part, they could go out there and get it because it's not going to rust out there in the desert with no rainfall. You imagine a planet that's like that, right? It's just a junkyard for spaceships. And maybe you've gotten a tip. Someone wants to hire you to go all the way out there to retrieve something from a ship that was crashed years ago that you've now discovered was never recovered. Like maybe the black box was never recovered. But you know for a fact that you were the engineer that worked on it, and that black box was not where all the other black boxes is and doesn't have a transponder. So you know where it is. And if you can pull that off of that ship, you can prove that the ship was shot down by a, a warring company and then you cause a massive amount of hell going down. You could blackmail company one and get paid a bunch of money with the proof and you can back it up. You know, see the plot line? Like you can create something like that. So your players are traveling down to this planet. There's only two characters playing at the table. That's okay. You don't need a big party. It could be one player, just you and your friend, you and your daughter, you and your cousin. You know, it doesn't matter what age group they are. It's very simple. The things you want to do are not difficult to figure out. The thing that makes it exciting and interesting is the challenges and the problems that someone tries to resolve with their character. And you will find that when people first come to the game, they have a tendency to like make a militaristic character because they want to do a militaristic campaign. Well, give them a militaristic campaign. Or they want to be an explorer, an archaeologist like Indiana Jones. Give them that. The bad side of all this is it's so open and so flexible that if you aren't a really, really great, solid, creative person, you probably would be better off just buying an adventure, right? Guess what? <laughs> they have those too. So this Pirates of Drenax is being streamed online by a lot of people. This is a massive, huge, epic adventure. The Secret of the Ancients is a really huge, massive adventure. So you got ones you can buy. The Secret of the Ancients is really good. I have this book. It's awesome. You see it on the cover. Let me show you the cover here. These are all the books I have, right? You can see past the wording here. I have the supply catalog, the GM screen, which is such a lifesaver, the core book, and a couple other ones, right? Citizens of the Imperium, things like things that helped me develop a world. And I bought one big massive campaign book because I wanted to see, well, what was inside this one here, right? And this one here is really quite interesting. It's a really interesting long story. Um, you start off doing one thing and you end up going way off in a tangent. You have different new characters. The art's really great. The plot line's really simple, but it's uh, long. So you can play this forever, right? Forever. So I want to wrap the video up here. If you if you aren't hooked by now, and if you made it this far in a video, I applaud you because I know I'm very long winded, but this is a really, really cool game and it really, really deserves, um, take a look at it. And it, it really deserves a chance to go play it. I'll try to look up. I have a video on my web, on my YouTube channel. About a year ago, they released a light version for free and you probably can't get it anymore, but you might be able to find it on the internet somewhere if you want to try to grab a copy. But I really encourage you to, to, to buy a copy of this game and, and try even just to have it just to have it and read through it and go wow it'd be so cool to play this adventure sometimes that's what all i get all i get to do like i won't get to play traveler for about a year and then i do we'll binge play for like two months and we get tired of it and we'll go do something else right we don't have adhd but that's what whirls around here <laughs> so but you might really enjoy this and if you're going to do it and you're going to jump into the game system try the method i mentioned where you could send mongoose publishing an email say hey listen i want to buy the core book um I've heard online that Classic DM says that when he bought his, you, he sent you guys an email and you gave him a PDF copy. Do you guys still do that? Just be professional, upbeat, and friendly. It isn't some kind of insider track that I do. I read about it on Reddit that someone else said, yeah, if you email them, they'll send you a PDF and they'll send you a drive-through PDF link so you can get your own um, copy of the book as well. So yeah, 
there you have it. And you can, here's a sample file on, on DriveThruRPG. You can take a look at everything. So let me know what you think. And if you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section. If you want to learn more about Traveler, Traveler, let me know. I'll be happy to explore it more. I have been trying to build up the uh, library for the Hidden Tron and Tomoshan, but we went out west for like a month and a half for research for my Wild West game. I came back. I want to start putting some content for you guys to check out. So I've been kind of like pot shotting some stuff every now and then for fun. So I hope you have fun with this video. Let me know if this has been helpful for you. And if you like this kind of content, want more of it, let me know and I'll be happy to make more. All right. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Labor Day weekend's coming up. We'll talk to you again real soon.